Okay, mic set, recording software is all set. The video, JDBC. In, in fact, uh, I have, it's been a long time I've worked on JDBC, uh, maybe five to six years. Maybe the last time I've used it is to make a video. Why this video? Uh, that's weird because from, from a long time I'm using Spring and Hibernate for database and things were going good. But then I thought it's important for us to understand what happens behind the scene, right? Understanding JDBC is very important. Now, question arises: why you need JDBC here? Now, think about this. All your data is getting stored in the database, right? And as a user, a normal user, when they want the data, they can't simply talk to database directly, right? You can, they cannot simply say, hey, database, I want a data for a user whose roll number is 101. Database has no idea what you're talking about. So basically, you have to speak the database language and the language which your database or DBMS understands is SQL. So basically you have to talk to your database with the help of SQL language. Now the thing is, not everyone knows SQL. Of course, as a programmer, it's your job to know SQL, but not a normal person. They are busy with their life. They are busy with doing accounting. They're busy with building rockets. They're busy with all the other things. It's your job as a programmer to help them to connect with database. And that's where you build applications, right? Now this application can be written in any language, let's say Java, C Sharp, PHP, Ruby, or JavaScript, doesn't matter. So when you build this application, you allow your user to interact with it, and then this application will interact with the database. Now how do you connect your application with your database? Now that depends upon the language which we use. Example, if you're using Java, and then you have a database, to connect this to, we have to use something called JDBC, which is Java Database connectivity. Okay, now how do we use it? See, the first of all, when you talk about JDBC, with the help of JDBC, you can connect your Java and database, right? But then how will you connect with? And is it applicable for only one type of DBMS or you can connect with any DBMS? Because in this world, we have thousands of databases or DBMS, out of which few are famous. Example, we have Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, uh, and many more. We are going to use Postgres here because in this machine, I have Postgres installed. Doesn't matter which RDBMS which you use, everything will work. In fact, most of them support JDBC. Now, how Java knows how to connect with all this DBMS? And that's where the fun thing comes into picture. So all these different DBMS, they have their own library to connect with Java. Okay, so if you talk about MySQL, they have their own library. If you talk about Postgres, they, they have their own library. What you need in your application is the library. Okay, so the first thing you need is a library. And when you have that library, what next? Now that's where you have to follow certain steps. It's like a recipe, right? If you want to cook something, you follow certain steps. In the same way, if you want to connect your Java application with database, you have to follow seven steps. In fact, six steps. Okay, so before we talk about the steps, let's also take an example which I've taken way back, which is calling someone. So let's say if, if you want to know the information about something, let's say you are at home and you want to know what is happening in your office. So what you will do is you will talk, you will call to your colleague, not for the gossip, but to get some information. So you will call them and say, hey, you know, I want the information about uh, what is going on with the project. Now, you can't simply think in your mind and then your, your colleague will know. Of course, you have to use certain devices, right? So the first thing you need is a phone. So you will take a phone and then you'll make sure that you have a connection because most of the places we don't have network where the mobile network says we, we are available everywhere. No, they are not. Uh, but let's say the first thing you need is a network or the Wi-Fi connection if you want to do a WhatsApp call. So two things. First, you need a phone. Then you need a connection. Next, you have to dial. Of course, right? You can't simply look at your phone and then you, you will assume that it will, it will get connected to your friend. You have to dial the number. Then there will be ringing. So the, there will be a ring and then your friend will pick up the call. Of course, if they are free and they want to talk to you. Once they pick up the call, you will say something, right? That's the information which you want. Of course, after the greetings and hello, hi, what's going on, all those stuff they're done, you will, you will ask for a specific information and then your, the, your friend will give you some information. Now you have to process the information, of course, with, your, with some context, with some previous knowledge, you will understand what he's trying to say. And then everything done, you will simply close the connection or if you want, you can throw your phone. Okay, don't do that. But those are the steps. In the same way, if you want to connect your Java application with database, let's follow these seven steps or six steps. So the first one is import the 
packages. Okay, now in Java, if you want to use certain things, you have to import the package. Remember when we talked about the library? Uh, so basically, in this, uh, you have to import the packages where you have all the classes interfaces for JDBC. Next step is to load the driver. Now this is almost same as uh, checking if you have a network. So loading the driver. Now this driver will be provided by the actual RDBMS. So for different DBMS, we have different drivers. Now with JDBC 4.0, which is a version of JDBC, which came, I think in Java 6, loading the driver is optional now. The next step is you have to register the driver. Okay, which is whatever driver you have, you have, to, you have to register. Next, you have to create a connection. That's why you have to dial the number, right? So next step is to actually create a statement. So before you, when you say something, you think about it, right? That's creating a statement. Now, once you thought about it, say, that's your execute the statement. And then if everything goes good, you will get a response. So basically you have to say process the response and then after doing all those things, it's important to close the connection. Otherwise you will get a huge bill. That's why I close the connection. Okay, so with those seven steps, let's try to implement it. Now, how do we implement it? The first thing you need is a IDE. Oh, in fact, before IDE, let me open the DBMS. Now we are using Postgres here. So I will open Postgres, taking some time. Okay, and then uh, this is PG admin. Basically, when you install Postgres, it will also give you PG admin. Now, based on which DBMS you have, there are different ways of opening it. Now, if you want to try out uh, Postgres, it's very simple. Just go to Google, search for Postgres, download, and then common steps. It will ask you for the password, set a password, set a difficult password for your database. And that's why in my machine, I have a password, which is 0000, difficult to guess. Okay, and okay, that's it. I'm into my Postgres. Now we can create our own database if you want. So you can right click here and you can create a new database. But what I've done is I already have a database. In fact, in one of the video, we have used a product table. So we are going to use the same table. So that is available in the Telisco database. So the database name is Telisco. Inside that, if I go to schema and if I scroll down, you can see we have a tables here. If I say view, all those, we already have some data here, if you can see, yeah. So we, you can see we have all this data here. I want to fetch this data in my application. How do I do that? Quite simple. If I go back here, uh, okay, we don't have an application. So I will open my IntelliJ and let's create a new project. So again, you can use any IDE which you want, but I'm using IntelliJ here. One of the thing with IntelliJ is you can actually add external Java files easily. So let me create a project and I will say this is for videos. Okay, uh, location download doesn't matter because I'm going to delete this project. And then I want this as a Java application. And then the build system is IntelliJ. The JDK which I'm using is 17, but anything above eight should work. Click on create, you will get your project. You can see I got my project here. Now in this project, let me create a file or a class basically. And let's name this as demo. So this is where we are going to write our code, all the code basically. But then this will not work without the jar file. If you can see in the external libraries, we only have one, which is your JVM, I mean, which is your Java library. But what we also want is the driver for Postgres. Now where you can get it, you can simply do a Google search. So you can search for Postgres driver for JDBC and see if you can find that. Maybe you can also get from the official website. I never tried it. And as I mentioned, it's been a long time I've worked on this, but it says it is a pure Java driver. So it should work. Click on download and okay. So based on the version, as I mentioned, anything which is about eight or eight about it should work. So, and the JDBC version it is have is 4.2. So the first two steps are optional. Click on download and you can see it will give you a jar file. This is the jar file I was talking about. So this is where we have to add the jar file. How do you add the jar file? It's very simple. Go to file, uh, go to project structure. And this is where you will see libraries folder or library section. Just click on libraries, click on this plus and say new project library for Java. Yes. And now you can basically select the jar file, which you have downloaded. Click on okay and done. You can see this will be a part of this external jar file. This is important. Okay. Because in this, you have all the required classes. Okay. Let's go back to demo. And this is our main file. So in this particular video, the idea is how do you connect your Java with database, right? And if we can even write a single query to connect with database, our job is done. So what we're going to do is we'll fire a simple SQL query 
and of course we have to fire the SQL query. So I will say string SQL. So we have to fire the query. Now, if you know SQL, it's very easy. So you can say simply select, select star, or maybe I can just use one record. Uh, I want to say select, let's go to PG admin. I want to select a name with the ID, let's say eight. So I want to print Apple keyboard. Okay, so I want a name from product table where the ID is equal to eight. Simple SQL query, so what it will return you is a name, simple string, and that's what we want. Okay, now this is the query we have to fire, but then this will not work. On, I mean, of, with only SQL query will not work. You have to follow the seven steps. Remember the seven steps which we have talked about? So the first thing you will do is the load the driver. Again, the loading and registering is optional. You can directly jump into connection. So you can use something called connection interface. Now this belongs to java.sql. Okay, so this is a special package where you can find all the SQL interfaces and classes. So we'll say connection con equal to, now how do you create an object here? Basically connection itself is an interface, right? So you can't simply create an object of it. So you can use another class which is called a driver manager which has a method called get connection. So using this get connection method, you can create the connection. So you will get this object. Okay, so that's why you are basically trying to connect with your uh, database. Okay, but then with this, how will my Java application will know which DBMS to connect? What is the username? What is a password? So of course we have to specify the DBMS name, which is Postgres. We have to mention your database name, which is Telisco. You have to mention your username, which is Postgres in this case, and the password, which is 0000, 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 yeah, four times. How do I mention that? So if you can see, get connection, so if I cut this part, control space, okay, it's giving the default one. Let's try once again. So when I say get connection, there is another method which takes three parameters. So first is the URL, second is the username, and third is the password. So if you specify the URL, the username and the password. So I have to specify these three things, that's it. Okay, but then uh, we have to create these variables, right? So it, I can just go back here and say string URL. So we'll mention this, then we have to mention the username. Username for this Postgres is Postgres. And string, of course, this is something which will be given by the Postgres when you do the setup and the password is four times zero and you are done. But yeah, we have to complete the URL. Now how the URL looks like? You just have to mention three things. First, JDBC, because your Java application will be connected with JDBC. JDBC is connected to the Postgres SQL and Postgres SQL is connected with a database, which is the Telisco. So database name is Telisco, right? So if I show you here, the database name is Telisco and done. Uh, not exactly. The thing is, the Postgres works on the network. So if you want to connect your Java with Postgres, you have to mention the network address. So here I can say colon localhost colon slash telisco. So basically we have to mention these three things. First URL, which is your application got connected to JDBC colon Postgres SQL colon slash slash localhost slash telisco because it's in the same uh, address. Also, if you have to mention the port number, now this port number changes as per the DBMS. For MySQL, it is 3306, Postgres, it is 5432, and depending upon your different DBMS, you have different port numbers. And you will get to know when you, when you install the Postgres or any DBMS, it will mention the port number on which you can connect with it. So you can just remember that. Remember that. Okay, get connection is giving you an error. It simply says it might throw an exception. So of course I can write try catch, which you should do. But since I'm teaching you this, I want to make the code a bit clean for, for you to understand. What I will do is I will simply throw the SQL exception. In fact, I can simply say throws exception. Our job is done. Not a good idea. You should use try catch. But here, just to make the code look good, I'm using this. So we are done with the connection as well. What's the next step? Now we have to think about the statement. Now, if you want to talk to your DBMS, the statement which I'm talking about, there are three options. You have option of using a statement as an interface. So we have statement interface, which is from java.sql package. We also got a prepared statement, and then we can also use callable statement. So I can say callable statement. Okay, three options, but here you can, you can use normal statement to achieve that. Okay, I will say statement st equal to 
con dot create statement. Now basically we can use callable statement for procedures. Uh, we can use statement or prepare statement. Difference between these two I will let you know in some time, but yeah, you can use those things. Now once you got your statement and we also got SQL, it's time to execute. Okay, so it's, it's something like you called your friend or your colleague, you know what you want to say, now it's time to say it. Okay, now how do you, how will you say it? It's very simple, ST. The statement has a method called execute query. So you can use execute query. So basically if you want to fire the select query, you can use execute query. If you want to fire the insert update, you can use execute update, which will make some changes in the database. So we can use SQL query here. And then in this, you just have to pass the query. It's so simple. So execute query says, I will execute. You just give me the query and you just pass the query. But then when you say something, your friend will also say something. Now, when you execute this query, what you will get in return. So what I will do is I will just copy this, go back to Postgres. And here I want to execute this. So how do I get the SQL prompt? It's here. I think you need a query tool. Okay. So that's my query. And I want to run this query. You can see when you run this query, you will get Apple keyboard. That's what we wanted. But if you look at this output, are you getting only Apple keyboard or are you getting the structure where you also have a column name? The thing is, if you're thinking that this SQL query will give you a type string, then you're wrong. If I click on execute query, it returns a result set. Imagine it result set as a table format in the Java code. So basically you have to accept data with the help of ex, uh, result set equal to, I mean result R is equal to ST dot execute query. And then once you got this result set, basically this has a data now. Okay, trust me, this has a data. But the problem is if this is how you get the data, your pointer is not pointing to Apple keyboard. Example, if you go back here and say, hey result set, get me the data because when you want to get something, the most common method is always get. You can also mention what type of data you're getting. You're, are you getting a uh, integer type data or are you getting the string type data? We know we are getting string type data and the number of columns. So the column number is very important here. You can say one because you only got one column. But then if you try to save this in a string, let's say name, do you think this will work? I mean, I know it will not work, but let's say if it works, what should be the output? Of course it should print. Let's pin name and let's see what happens. Sometimes you learn by mistakes, right? So let's make some mistakes and right click run. Okay, so you can see we got an error. It says result set not positioned properly. Perhaps you need to call next. So what is happening is when you're saying get me the string, you are expecting that there will be only one record and you can fetch it. First of all, there can be many records, uh, multiple rows and also where your pointer is pointing when you're when you when you're saying get string so by default the pointer is here we want to move the pointer to the apple keyboard so before you use it you can simply say rs.next and that's it now you shifted your pointer to the first record and now if you run this you got your output so that's your jdbc okay and you got the output as apple keyboard but is this code complete first of all we made a lot of uh, bad practices, don't throw the exception, you have to handle the exception, don't don't write username password in the code, write it somewhere else. And statement is not a good idea, but we'll talk about how do we solve that. But the most important thing which we forgot is to close the connection. Remember, it's like calling someone and not cutting the call. So close the connection. Let's try to understand what can go wrong with statement. Now, when you say statement, basically we are filing a query, right? But what if the eight here is coming from the user. Of course, right? User don't always want Apple keyboard. Maybe user want to specify a ID based on which you want to fetch. What if this eight is dynamic? Now, or the ID is dynamic. In that case, you need to you need to ask the user to enter the number and then user will enter. But how will you replace it? That's one question. And what if a user is typing some another query in terms of in case of value? So it's always better to instead of using statement, we can use prepare statement. There's a concept of SQL injection. I don't know how many of you know it. You can just Google it later. So basically in the, in the text field where a user has to know, enter the number, a user can enter the query itself. Okay, so... To avoid SQL injection, we should use prepared statement. We are not going to do that in this video, but 
just want to let you know that there's a concept available which is prepare statement where uh, you a user if if a, if you ask a user to enter the number and if user is not entering a number entering something else it will not accept so you are safe there okay so yeah that's how we use jdbc and uh, it's important to know something what happens behind the scene anyway when you start using spring with orm you don't write all the steps you simply say hey i want an object or i want data spring framework will say take it so yeah that's it from this video uh, where we talked about jdbc and see you in the next video Bye-bye.